hi guys how are you doing welcome to my channel my name is lynn and yes <clears throat> i know i've not been here for such a long time but i know you might have seen me somewhere else so i am here and um the reason why i am doing this video is because i asked you guys on my social media platforms uh, that's mainly facebook and instagram to ask me some of the questions you have always wanted to ask me and i promised to answer and you guys you came in <laughs> yeah you, you 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 went all in and you asked me so many questions yeah i think there were around 79 questions and they were all rather the same and most of them were um, revolving around my work my love life <laughs> and yeah actually pretty much it most of these questions are about my uh, work and my love life and my inspiration so i promised you guys i would definitely answer so i got almost 79 questions and what i have done i have classified them into different categories so you'll find even if i don't answer your question directly i'm obviously answering along that line if it's about work i'm going to answer most of the questions about work so we could call this maybe a get to know me tag yeah and yeah this is a lapel right here uh which is definitely used to enhance uh the sound i i know it looks kind of weird where it is but yeah so the first question was uh this actually I, i'm not going to mention the names of the people who asked me because i've kind of classified this into different categories so you'll find that one question has been asked by like five people yeah and the first question is what are you most scared about <laughs> funny thing about this question is it's from a colleague of mine we work together yeah he asked me this question and he's like what are you most scared about honestly what i am most scared about is leaving this world before i accomplish what god has put me here to do and it scares me because sometimes i don't even think i am doing enough you know and i am like ah is god proud of me like i wouldn't honestly want to leave this world without accomplishing what god has put me here to do yeah so over the last few months i have really been pushing myself because i feel like yo god i like i just want god to be proud of me i know he is but i really want him to be proud of me so yeah to my colleague at work what i am most scared about leaving this world before i get to accomplish what god has put me here to do <clears throat> the second question is who is lean where now let me tell you guys if you have ever struggled defining yourself this question will make you struggle like who is lean and i i like my first my first answer automatically would be like lean is a journalist but no lean is so many things i don't even know if i'm going to get it right but lean is um, this is just a definition of who i am lean is um lean is a daughter Lynn is a sister. Lynn is a lover. <laughs> Lynn is a lover. Um Lynn is just just a girl like I don't know just in, I'm not even a girl anymore. Just a lady trying to make the best out of this life. But if I, I would just define myself like automatically I would say Lynn is a daughter, Lynn is a sister, Lynn is a lover and Lynn is a child of God most definitely. Yeah, um uh now uh, yeah this one is do the stories you do affect you and how do you cope honestly when i asked you guys to ask me the questions i knew this question was coming because even before you asked it's a question i've been getting a lot about the stories i do if you're watching this for the first time i work at tuko i'm a producer and a reporter and I'm, i mainly cover human interest stories so that's why you might find people asking me whether the stories i do affect me and how do i cope so if you've noticed i do a lot of emotional stories stories and in between i cry i won't lie to you i cry because they are so emotional ah sorry guys i know this one is shaking so let me just try fix something with this mic so it stops the shaker i think we are straining the wire here okay yeah 
that might give us some space now before it goes on. Yeah, so I do, uh, sorry, sorry about that. I do a lot of emotional stories. Uh, if I'm not doing a story about domestic violence, I am doing a story about someone who has been molested. I am doing a story about someone who has lost their spouse. And here's the thing, I get affected a lot, a lot. In my first instances while doing these stories, I could barely sleep to be honest and I remember people kept telling me Aline you need to start speaking to a counselor Lynn you need to see a therapist but um, I've not reached that point where I feel like I need to see a counselor or I need to see a therapist because all these stories I'm covering I've been in those situations before I even posted it on my Facebook once that sometimes it's it's not easy but i can handle it because i know people go through pain in different ways but if it's about someone losing their loved ones i have lost my dad i lost my grandpa i lost my grandma and for me i think my dad's was the my dad's was one that actually shocked me because yeah we were just having problems and we did not recon like Anyways, I don't want to get so much into that, but I have lost people. If we are talking about people who are sleeping hungry, I have slept hungry before. If we are talking about, um, like, you know, those instances where, you know, you've been here before, maybe not to, like the magnitude of what this person is going through, but you can honestly relate. Yeah, I've been there before. So it's easy. And I tend to connect well with my guests because I have been there before, you know, and I know exactly at some point what they are feeling. And when they cry, the reason I cry, it's because I, I, I don't believe that... I understand I'm a journalist and I understand that's my profession and sometimes it requires us to be a professional but someone is not gonna cry and I'm just gonna put on some stone cold face and not feel a thing for them and when tears come I let them come and I let them cry because for me when they cry why I don't rush to offer them a tissue or give them a hug it's because I understand this is their moment to let it all out this is their moment they are becoming you know they, they are letting it all out and afterwards the burden will be a bit lesser if there's a word like that their burden will be a bit lesser or what they are feeling inside yeah so that's why sometimes when they cry I cry when they cry I let them actually cry I don't pretend to understand their pain that much so uh, yeah the stories will obviously affect you but I am also in debt like I am a lot of people trust me to tell these stories a lot of people trust me to bring these stories to light my audience will uh, will tag you even and be like lynn can you please cover this story uh, lynn this is going on can you cover so you have so many people who are trusting you to bring these stories to light you don't even have the luxury of saying no like you don't have the luxury of being like I can't cover this story. You just have to. Yeah, and I believe they are changing. We are changing the world one story at a time. And maybe a special moment to appreciate anyone who has, you know, just been everyone. Like you guys, you've been with me through uh, all this. If you've not watched my work yet, please go to Tuko and see some of the videos we do. And as always, I welcome suggestions. And yeah, we are a team, you know. We are a team. Um what are your thoughts about working with people like what are your thoughts about working with people stroke teamwork okay so here's the thing i don't think you can do this alone especially in my field i don't think you can do this alone you need a team and part of part of telling successful stories is letting everyone play their role okay if i'm a producer i have got to let my cameraman be independent in the field and uh, it's funny because i shoot with my colleague edwin ochien most of the times and he acts as the cameraman plus the director and there are instances where we will disagree in the field about particular shots and uh, but when we get like uh for us we always agree to disagree you know sometimes he'll tell me lynn don't sit like that or lynn you you can't take it personal because production requires that you work as a team 
because if one person is not there you are not going to produce a successful product or a successful story in that case so i treasure working as a team for me teamwork means everything like for me if i am doing a story i have got to make sure i brainstorm with my entire team because people have people have ideas you don't have people can be able to see things that you can't see so for me that's why teamwork is important like you can't do this thing alone you can't do this thing alone so yeah um uh, yeah, as i said most of these questions are about my work we are getting to some personal ones too someone's asked did you always want to be a journalist <laughs> <laughs> now you guys here's the thing if you have not been in a situation where today you want to wake up and be a lawyer tomorrow you want to wake up and be a doctor and then you are like no i want to be a counselor i have gone through all those things but i always knew for sure my dad always wanted me to be uh no my dad wanted my big sister to be a doctor and then he wanted me to be a lawyer or some sort yeah but I hated law, to be honest. I, I, I love law when you are watching uh, shows like Suits and, you know, those, those really nice series on TV. Yeah, you, you are going to love law, but no, I, I, I knew I was not cut out to be a lawyer. And for me, I, I always knew I wanted to tell stories. I didn't know where I would fit in, whether it's to be a filmmaker or a reporter. But I also know I don't like news a lot. Like, I don't like covering news a lot. But what I know for sure is I always knew I wanted to tell stories. Maybe not a feel uh, professionally in the film category but i always knew i wanted to tell stories so from the word go i knew i wanted to be i knew deep down i was going to be a journalist i knew i was going to be a journalist and it's just different you know same field different uh different things you know aha uh -huh. someone here asks me who inspires you inspiration is a big deal yeah to everyone so over the course of my life I, I i find inspiration from different people and i think i have been inspired by family members i have been inspired by colleagues i have been inspired by people i have never met such as david gogging sylvester stallone jack bauer because for the life of me i still can't understand how jack bauer can transition from acting to singing so beautifully so i i find in i like inspiration I, like from different people but I think um, I think I also have really close people who I know I can call any day anytime like when when I am low there are those people I know I can definitely call um, probably <laughs> even uh, midnight and they will pick and they will listen to me talk I have my big sister I have my mom I have Gregory and uh, yeah and I also have so there's this teacher who used to love me a lot back in high school his name is uh, Mr. Nandoha and he has played such a huge role into the person I have become I there are instances in life where I would just reach out to him and tell him I'm going through this and and he would listen so those are just people who are close to me that inspire me and also challenge me and encourage me and it's important to have sometimes you don't even know where to look in this one is it this side or that side anyways it's important to have people who you can call any day anytime and they'll be right there to listen to you okay hiya name four of your role models guy <laughs> role models so I, me i find it hard sometimes because i don't know am i the only one who keeps changing her role models like honestly so he, the, here's the thing i i am my, my my first and biggest role model is my mom i want to be i want to be half what that woman is my mom is my biggest role model simply because my mom is just she's amazing guys i'll one day make a video about her and all the things she has done and sacrificed ah god 
damn it yeah so we are not crying today my mom is my biggest role model um another role model that i look up to these are people i look up to okay uh wangari mother she taught us one of the biggest lessons in life that fight for what you believe in even if you're the only person who believes in it right so wangari mother is also one of my role models i also love and i get so much inspiration from jaramogi oginga odinga um reason being he was so selfless you know and that's why i don't like history is keeping me i like always going back in time and talking or figuring out people who 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 gave people who gave us everything they had and for me jaramogi is also one of the people you'll find i hang an image of him in my house and yeah and another one of my role models definitely gregory kiwa um i honestly think if there's anyone who believed in me when i i was losing myself and when and people lose themselves every other time and who kept believing in what i am capable of it's that guy gregory and he's also my role model because i've seen him fight for his dreams since day one and not a single day have i seen him give up i gave up for four years i think i gave on my dream for four or five years but not a single day have i seen him give up on his dream so for me that is that that's beautiful okay that's beautiful hi yeah <laughs> hey, what do you look for in a man yeah if you ask people to ask you questions that you then you must yeah you must expect all these kind of questions what do i look for in a man okay a man for me i think god fearing is number one like i want to be um i want to be on a level with a person or i want my partner to be a god fearing person because that's the level i am in right now and i don't want to be you know conflicted yeah god fearing and god fearing does not mean someone who is so uh, religiously intoxicated or something like that but someone who will do right by you you know someone who will do right by you so for me it has to be god fearing uh um, my man has to be consistent okay As a man who is consistent is a turn on for me because i think it's it's just beautiful to see a man who knows what he wants and he's going after it and a man who is also like a uh, who who is starting something and he looks forward to finishing it so for me consistency in a man is key and someone who is supportive i want you water me i water you kind of kind of man you know i like i'm not so dependent on some on on someone but i believe in in being supportive of your spouse um hmm. are you married stroke kids stroke relationship <laughs> no i am not married i do not have kids on when it comes to relationship let's just say i am in love yeah we'll, we'll, that one will live right there i am in love or let's call it a big crush on someone yeah okay uh what's your take on forgiveness okay funny thing this came from someone i know and our um uh, i know why they asked me this question my take on forgiveness is as simple as forgiving someone does not mean you have to be reconnected with them but forgive as fast as you can <coughs> and move on i've said this in a previous uh, video one that i had uploaded but deleted earlier is that for you to be able to heal completely regardless of what happened to you you must learn to forgive like you you have to forgive you know but don't confuse forgiveness with going back to the person or the situations that hurt you you have to forgive people so you heal me which i was one of those motivational speakers who could bring this really clearly you know 
for you to heal you have to forgive people because if you have not forgiven people you will stay on that same place you know and i also read a quote that says forgiveness is giving up on the fact that the past could have been any different so it is what it is sometimes things don't work out but you can't live there you have got to forgive so as to move on you know so as to create space for new things to come in your life so as to to grow you know so as to grow because if you are ever in that same place that means you are not growing and if you're forgiving someone then that means you are if you if you have not forgiven someone then that means you are holding a grudge right and when you're holding a grudge it occupies so much in your heart that there's no space for new things or people to come in so forgive as fast as you can heal take your time to heal of course take your time to heal but most importantly always remember forgiveness does not mean that you have to reconnect with someone i am our favorite actor keifa sutherland <laughs> jack bauer yes jack bauer jack bauer is my favorite actor of all times i am i don't know i just i was such a huge fan of 24 I still watch it every December. I will watch all 24, but I'm reducing it because I'm watching really less TV nowadays. But I look forward to playing that series to my kids. I know it has a lot of actions involved and damn it, Chloe, and all those things. But I want my kids to see what their mom was so crazy about. Yeah. Has your heart ever been broken? <laughs> Yes, yes, my heart has been broken before, but I am glad I am. I Yeah, my heart has been broken and I also broke someone's heart before. So maybe serves me right, I think so. But honestly though, my heart has been broken and there's nothing as bad as taking care of a broken heart. I can tell you that for free and but then you see, when they say time heals all wounds, there's a reason why they say that time actually does heal all wounds. So in time, you just realize the pain is slowly kicking away and you're starting to be happy and A, B, C, D. Yeah, so yeah, my heart has been broken before. But you see, for me, I don't regret like... Um, oh, actually, yeah, let, let's combine that with this question. What do you... Uh, I don't know why I combined it, but anyways, uh, what do you regret most? I do not think I regret something. I don't think I regret anything in my life because all my past experiences have shaped me to be the kind of person I am today. And for me, I always know now that I know better, I will do better. But anything that I have done out of love, out of care, out of just you know from here i don't regret it it might not have turned out the way i wanted it to but it sure did shape me and th they're just those collection of experiences that you have that kind of shape the person that you are so i don't regret honestly but i always tell myself if like for now i really know better so i am doing better each and every day i am doing better uh, what's your greatest achievement of 2019? Starting from scratch, I think. I, uh, those people who are close to me know that I, I just recently came back to doing what I love. And that's just what you see me guys doing. My biggest achievement in 2019 was starting from scratch. Telling myself I can do this and just going all in and not caring what anyone has to say and just making so many mistakes and learning from those mistakes here. Yeah? So starting from scratch for me has been my biggest achievement of 2019. And I just want to take this moment to encourage anyone who might have lost way or someone who might have diverted from what they love most. You can always come back. It's not too late. It's not too late. There are times I was telling myself I am paying for the four or five years I wasted not doing what I love, but I've come to realize that's not it. They were not wasted years. They were learning years. So yeah, starting from scratch for me is a huge deal. Um, 
is a huge deal for me like right now okay so we are approaching the final two uh these are the final two questions uh where do you see yourself in the next five years <clears throat> I, I want to answer this question but i also like the way i want to answer it is i have learned to see myself like that particular I'm, I'm 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 like right now i'm living in the present okay there are times and i understand and i'm not telling people don't set goals or don't expect or don't envision yourself having a great life but i am not doing those plans anymore i am not planning where i want to be in the next five years because it's not guaranteed yeah what i am doing is that every second for me right now counts because i have come to understand that could be my last you know so i have to go all in if i am doing a project i have to give it my all okay if i am visiting my family or speaking to my mom or chilling with my sisters or chilling with someone i love okay i have to be all in i have like my mind my soul my heart has got to be there at that particular moment i'm learning to be present okay and being present also means looking yourself in the mirror and telling yourself you are not doing the most you are not doing the best you can okay you are not giving it your all so for me every day like right now even this second when i am recording this and i am talking to you i'm giving it my all like i'm honestly giving it my all because i understand the next second could be totally totally different um if you were to go back and change something in your life what would it be again nothing nothing because sometimes you do things at that particular moment because that's exactly the best way you know how to do those things yeah and yeah so i don't want to live in the imagination i can go back to my life i can't go back like i can't go back to 2013 2012 2011 i can't go back yeah but what i can do is not make the mistakes i made those times like i can't repeat those mistakes like right now yeah i can't yeah what book are you currently reading okay so uh for this month in december i am reading uh, you can't hurt me by david goggins david goggins is a huge deal to me especially because i want to i uh, i've learned so much from him in the course of the year and every year i always choose who will motivate me so i look at their journey and i see how they were able to accomplish and i try to emulate them not like copy or something but i try to do the things that they have they are doing so like 2019 it was sylvester stallone meaning you have to start from scratch sometimes and 2020 we are going to get motivated by david goggins because for me 2020 is all about mindset it's all about going back to the gym again which i'm already doing but um yeah so i'm reading you can't hurt me by david goggins it's an amazing book i would urge all of you guys to check it out and i am not sure if i have answered all those questions but as you can see i had to compile them to like yeah i couldn't honestly answer 79 questions they were all similar so that's pretty much about me yeah I thought I would do this because, you know, when you have a fan base, sometimes just open up to them a bit and let them know something about you. And once again, to wish you guys an amazing 2020. I know we are not there, but I'm so excited because I see a lot of good things happening in 2020. And for anyone who is going through something and you feel like you might want to talk to me, then on my facebook leave me yeah dm me and yeah if you want us to have a conversation about anything i am pretty much open to having it so i hope i've answered all your questions yeah let's have an amazing year i'll try and put as many videos here on my personal space as possible but yeah let me know <laughs> let me let me know like with god let me let me know what anyways i hope you guys you found this helpful and i hope i answered all your questions till next time bye bye and have a blessed 2020